This video is brought to you by the one and only Squarespace. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the perfect place to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hello, hello, welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my 1986 Ferrari Testarossa. Now, you join me in yet again another traffic jam in London in the Testarossa, which is not the ideal place to be. However, today I'm going to talk through some issues with this car. Now, it's not always plain sailing with old cars, as I've already demonstrated on this channel. When you buy an old car, there are some things you come to expect. There are always issues there's always something to do there's always something it needs fiddling with and this is no exception this car now it came incredibly well prepared from Joe Macari they're a fantastic bunch and this video is by no means an attack on them the car was absolutely mint when I got it from Joe Macari but as always with these things there is always something to be done so before any of you start whining in the comments saying oh Joe Macari didn't prepare it properly they did they did a sensational job and Sportless Mobile London over there did an amazing job. You'll see the condition of the car when I picked up. However, 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 there are some things which me being me, because I'm slightly weird about this sort of thing, I would like to uh, fettle with and improve somewhat, slightly improve it. So we are going to go and do just that. So I'm on my way to the Classic Car Company. Most of you will remember the Classic Car Company. I've visited them many, many times and they've been responsible for sprucing up. Ooh. 458, lovely. They are looking better and better, 458. They have very good news. Classic Car Company are responsible for sprucing up many of my cars before. They've got an in-house uh, paint guy who's absolutely amazing. So we're going to take a look around the car. We're going to go around what I am happy with, what I'm not happy with, and we're going to probably cut the waffle right here because I'm dragging this out. It's not really a video. And I'm also going to discuss future plans for this car, whether or not I'm going to modify it, and what on earth I'm going to do with this thing. What is my Testarossa plan, basically? Overall, though, I'm ecstatic with the car. It's not gone wrong at all. I've actually used it quite a lot um, for me. You know, I've, I've used this more than I thought I would. I thought this thing might actually um, sit around unused, but I've used it more than even my F12 recently, which is saying something. I absolutely adore this car, and that is why I'm going to go uh, and uh, lavish it with some TLC. So without further waffle then, let's cut the rubbish. Let's get on with the video. Right, you lot, we have arrived at the Classic Car Company. This is actually their new unit. We're gonna have a full tour in a video that I'm probably gonna be putting out after this, in which I drive an iconic Audi slash Porsche. Less on that, and more on my Testarossa, which is now inside here at the Classic Car Company. So many of you will be looking at the Testarossa and thinking, but TGE, it looks quite fresh. And you're right, it does look fresh. It looks very good. As I said before, it was prepared to a very, very high standard. The plastics are great. The paint is overall not bad whatsoever, um, but I think it does need a little bit of TLC. And in the interest of churning, here we are pumping out a video. However, I am actually gonna lavish some care on this car because I do genuinely, genuinely, absolutely love this car. And it's a long-termer, so. I am going to spend a bit of time and money on it. So we're here at the Classic Car Company anyway. This is their new premises. For those that haven't seen the video, I haven't even put out yet. This is their new premises. And they actually did some work on my M3. They've done some work on my 912. And I've known David here for years and years and years. And it was an actual fact, David, I was talking to a couple of years ago. And he said, Tom, you should buy a Testarossa. They're fantastic news. They're brilliant cars. And here we are. So David is actually over in the office over there, keeping an eye on me, but pretending to do some work. Let's see if he's listening. Uh, he's acting very well. He deserves to get an Oscar for that. Right, so let's go around the car then. So, let's start at the front. As is common, cars at this age, there are various marks and bits and bobs on them. So this one is no exception. We've got scrapes and little chips all over. I'm not sure you can see some of that's actually squash bugs, um, but you've got little chips all over the ruddy thing. Um, so these can be, you know, there's a little chip there on the grill. There's little bumps and whatnot all over it. Now, a lot of these things can't be fully removed. Uh, there is a dip in the paint there that you can see. Little bits and bobs, little battle scars. But that is, as I say, not uncommon for cars of this age. I mean, for God's sake, it's 35 years old. Thereabouts, it's 1986 and I can't count, so 
whatever that makes it. Um, but that is actually quite reassuring. On a car like this with 23,000 miles and of that age, it's quite reassuring that there are some battle scars on it. If you see a car like this and it's completely mint in certain areas of it, that can indicate that it's had a shunt. By all means, that doesn't mean that it hasn't had a shunt. I mean, it could have just had paint chips after being resprayed. However, it, it's quite a reassuring sign there are some of that. And that is what we call uh, generously patina. So I'm going to leave those to an extent, but what I am going to do with the paint, I'm going to get it really well sorted. So they're going to assess the paint. They're going to go around with paint monitors. They're going to assess paint depth, see what's had paint, what hasn't had paint. They're going to uh, then decontaminate it, get their little kind of uh, agitation brushes and whatnot. Uh, they're going to get their clay bars and all that kind of real kind of nerdy paint nonsense and effectively just give this a thorough once over and then get rid of a finish that I really don't like. So first and foremost, the paint is actually quite dull. You will see that it's probably coming out actually really well on camera because it's quite oversaturated, this camera. However, it is a little bit dull. We'll come round because you can see it a bit better around the back here. You can just get that kind of dull sheen. It's more, it's more towards Rosso Dino than it is Rosso Corsa at the moment. So using the right compounds and using the right products and including a really nice wax that uh, David's just been waxing lyrical about, we will get this up to fresh. So it's very hard to spot, but there are a lot of swirls and kind of marks in the paint. You can't really see it unless I put like a detailer's light on it but there's huge amounts of swells all over it and including the photo shoot that uh, my girlfriend did the other day for a magazine whereby she was actually sat on the back. I went out to walk the dogs very briefly. Uh, some of you will have seen this shoot because she's uh, uh, not wearing many clothes uh, at the front of the car and at the back and some of those shots will be probably out by now, potentially. But the photographer actually said to me, he goes, oh, I hope you don't mind, but I've just given it a little rub down with a cloth I found in the car. The cloth he found in the car had actually been a cloth that I used to do the wheels. So he actually rubbed um, basically a cloth with kind of a brake dust on it all over the paintwork. So he's actually swirled the back more than it already was from the car, particularly on this back panel here. He basically rubbed the whole thing. Um, and I don't like that, ladies and gentlemen. So I didn't tell him off. I didn't, I didn't bother correcting him on what he had done. I was just a little bit disappointed, but there we go. That's par for the course. Um, so other things they're going to be doing then on this car. It's not an easy car to work on either because these slats here, as you can see, it goes straight through into the engine. Very odd design in that, you know, water can just go through. So what actually they do here when they work on testosterone, they actually seal a lot of that up. And they also have to mask around this stuff as well because you don't want that getting polished up because that'll ruin it. And of course, they will chrome up the exhaust and any of the kind of piping that you can see from the back there. Rear lights are something that usually they get kind of um, brought back up and they get kind of machine polished. But with this, they've actually got the grills over the top of it. So they're going to be very hard to work on. Potentially, they will get removed to do that. But I don't really think there's any need because they're a matte finish anyway. They don't actually need to be brought back up. Around the front, actually, um, these could do with some uh, some work, some machine polishing, because they're getting a little bit yellowy and a bit a little bit horrible. So they will be brought back up actually. And future jobs, I know a lot of you hate this. I actually like this, despite the fact that some of you are telling me it's not original Ferrari and some of you are telling me it is. I don't know. I don't care. I really like it on the front of the car. And at some point, I'm going to get that re-chromed because it's lost some of the chrome finish on there. Not only that, but on some of the knock-on. Um, but center locks on the wheels, the chrome is getting a little bit whiffy. And um, this one's actually okay, but on one or two of them, the chrome's a little bit whiffy as well. So I will potentially at some point get that sorted, but that's gonna be a phase two type thing. Obviously all the arches and whatnot, they're gonna get in there, they're gonna clean, they're gonna take all the wheels off and they're gonna clean in the arches and sort out anything in there, all around the bushings, everything. Again, not an easy car to work on because of these slats. It's actually a bit of a pain in the backside. But other things they're gonna be doing is redressing the rubbers, getting all the rubber stuff sorted, and anything that's discolored and a little bit faded here that's gonna be brought back up to color. Not just dressed in shine, but dressed in color, which is absolutely key. Inside the car then, please ignore my Prada backpack. Inside here then, we are going to get the carpets out, gonna wet wash those, uh, and basically just dress and treat all the leathers and fabrics in here. Again, Macari have done a fantastic job. There's the cloth in question that was used and rubbed all over my paintwork. But everything in here is going to be dressed and prepared, including the plastics on the dash and all the leather finishes on here as well. Very, very exciting stuff. Jobs for the future then. 
it's going to go into Sexton's London after this, and we're going to fit a Blaupunk, uh Becker unit or BP46, whatever, whatever on earth it is, the one with the tape deck in it uh, that you kind of fold up and it's got a USB with a DAB radio in it. And what that will mean is it'll look 80s, but there'll also be a subwoofer under the seat, like in my Targa, and all the factory speakers, which I believe actually are in here, they will be um, taken out and replaced with up to date units, but you won't be able to tell that's been done. So the audio is going to be done in here because that's one thing that is actually lacking at the moment. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. It's not going to be due a service for quite some time, although especially with the kind of mileage I'm doing on it, all the tyres are fresh. It won't really need anything anytime soon. I'm just going to do the usual things, check all the levels, and just make sure it's all running right. But for now, I think that's probably pretty much it. I will be updating with this car when it's finished and there'll be some 50 50 shots and some process shots as well that guys are going to film here long term then i'm going to hold on to this car so it is definitely well worth sorting out and actually one thing i was going to say i mooted with taking the front plate off but sadiq is being such a pain in the backside at the moment i'm going to leave that front plate on there and i'm going to leave this registration on there as well that's the original plate that came on the car from new and i just don't really want to mess around with the history as much as i'd love to put a tacky tge fu plate on there it's not something i'm going to do now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this video was brought to you by the amazing Squarespace. If you've ever dreamed of starting a website, whether that's an online business, or whether that's a passion project, Squarespace is the perfect place to do just that. They give you all the tools to build an amazing website, be it for business or for pleasure, or the best combo, a mix of both. They've got loads of different tools at your disposal, and we'll run through a few of those now. So the first one that I touch on loads and loads of times, if you run an e-commerce business, email campaigns are so, so key. They allow you to build amazing, effective email campaigns. Another really cool feature is the membership aspect as well. You can create members areas and private members within the website really, really easily. That's really key to build value in your business and establish a sense of community as well. And speaking of building value, you can also build in subscription models into your business as well, as I have done with Crep Chief Notify. Another really important thing that most people don't clock when starting a website is most websites are actually viewed on your mobile phone. So Squarespace actually enable you to build a mobile and desktop version of the website concurrently that looks amazing on both. Really, really important. So if you're curious and you want to see how easy it is to start your new website, start your new project, start a new business, hit the link below and you'll get 10% off your first website with Squarespace. You've got to hit that link below and use the code right there please do keep sending in your websites your blogs and whatever you're creating i love seeing what you guys and girls are up to and i have a little nose around and offer my feedback as well on that so please do keep sending them to me via dm i love seeing what you guys and girls are up to so hit the link below get involved over an hour for now then that is that stay tuned for the second part of this little series with the testarossa where i get it back and we go around what on earth has been done if you're southwest london way or anywhere even vaguely near that get in touch with the classic car company because they are absolutely fantastic at what they do and they're a wealth of knowledge and david here is thoroughly a good egg so make sure you have a little chat with him because he's very interesting and he has been around all these cars for donkey's years and it's well worth having a natter anyway for now then thank you very much for watching and by the way they're not paying me for being nice so you don't have to be on your guard for that one i actually genuinely do rate these guys i will see you all very soon for now see you later